Welcome to a special bonus edition of In Pit Lane. Now, coming up this weekend down at Albert Park, it's the opening round of the World Formula One Championship. And, of course, we've seen all of the testing, all of the, all of the cars are here, all the drivers are here, so what's going to happen not only this weekend but for the rest of the season. To discuss the 2016 season with me, I'm joined by our expert panel. These are the people who live, breathe and absolutely bathe themselves in the wonderful world of Formula One. Not only have they drunk the Kool-Aid, they swim in the Kool-Aid. They colonically irrigate with the Kool-Aid. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from e-racing magazine, do we have... Uh, I've lost, lost it. <laughs> Trent... Uh, I do want to say Trent Price. Yeah, yeah, you do. It is Trent Price. Yeah, yeah, just think of... It, it, is, yeah. Trent, it is Trent Price. <laughs> and also, this is Michael Laminato from ABC Box of Neutrals Program. Thank God none of this is going to air and you'll never see it on our YouTube channel. <laughs> okay. Okay, guys, let's go through and, uh, and and have a look at this. First of all, have we learnt anything at all from testing? Yeah, uh, colonic sting, yes. <laughs> uh, and Mercedes well, is well, doing really well. Yeah, when you're using Kool-Aid, yeah, yeah well, that's Kool -Aid. Don't, not recommended. Uh, Mercedes did an, uh, an offensive number of laps. Uh, I can't remember the exact number. It was nearly 20 Grand Prix distances, though, which I is almost was, the whole season. Yeah, it was around the earth about 50 times, mm. something close to that, akin to that. But, yes. Uh, yeah. And they yeah. seem to have a very just sort of, you know, firm plan going in there. It wasn't to set the world on fire in terms of fast time. Yeah. It was just, you know, get lots and lots of laps yeah. in. If there's anything, if there's any weakness there, let's find it. Yeah, I mean, that's what all the top teams generally do. They just, oh, we've got our plan. It's up to the, the minnows and those who know that we're going to have a tough year. Look, just put, put a drop of fuel in the car, put some... Put some mm -hmm. Kool-Aid in, and we'll be we'll be looking good. You know, get some sponsors on board. But um, which you, you always sort of Force India has always been accused of doing that. But I think their their car is actually looking pretty good out of the box, overall pace. Like they seem to have a good solid baseline for their car. So yeah, could be some surprises in Melbourne. Well, let's go through the yeah. through the field at the moment and have a look at you know what we what we're expecting, and not just this weekend, as I said, but for the rest mm. of the season. The new uh, the new kids on the block from all the way from the good old USA. They're as American as Cannellonian pizza. They are uh, Huss Formula One. Mm. Yeah. For a start, I, like I said, I don't, I'm sort of confused about this team. I mean, this was supposed to be to promote Formula One. There are no American drivers. It seems to be very low key. Um, what are you guys expecting from Haas? Their, uh, their drivers are, are, of course, Romain Grosjean and yeah. uh, Esteban Gutierrez. Mm. Um, so there's, I assume the Gutierrez is bringing some Mexican money along. But apart from that, um, mm. Interesting choice of drivers. Obviously, mm. um, Romain Grosjean, not exactly from, I suppose, you know, he could be from somewhere down south, <laughs> you, know, in, you know, like somewhere <laughs> in the Cajun. You know, Louisiana, yeah, yeah. Louisiana man or something. Pre-colonial America, yeah. or like mm. pseudo-colonial yeah. possibly, yeah. Mm. Uh, they are about as American as pasta because they're mostly English, as it turns out. Their base mm. is mostly in England, where Manor mm. used to be before they liquidated this time last year. So they are more English than I think they're letting on, mm. but that also means they've got a whole bunch of good people, and more importantly, Catalonia was a good reference because it is pretty mm. much a Ferrari car they're running. Everything mm. except the bodywork and the tub mm. is being borrowed from Ferrari in a grey area of the loopholes, of the regulation loopholes that were closed at the end of last year that said you can't do that anymore, and that's why it turned out the car was actually okay in mm. testing. It seemed decently quick, it was moderately reliable, all the things that the new teams of 2010 weren't. So. Mm. They have, I think, fairly ambitions to score a point at least during, this year. Yeah, during the first week, they did strike a few problems in the second mm -hmm. week, which are minor technical glitches. These always these things happen. The more miles you do, eventually things will start creeping like in. Would say, yeah. The nose fell off. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so what are we expecting from them? I mean, where do you think they'll fit in the sort of in the scheme of things? Well, about yeah. about where do they finish? In, in behind who and in front of who? They have to be midfield. They have to be fighting. Well. They had to be fighting Force India, but they could, early on, that team could be a little further up than expected, mm -hmm. and they'll probably drop back. They need to be aiming towards the Sauber Force India range. If they're not, then, I don't know. I think that's what everyone's expected yeah. of them now, unfortunately, because they've come out and said, yeah, that's, that's what we want to do. So uh, if they fall back beyond that, and, and this is the thing, you've also got teams like Manor, which has got Mercedes engines, which could really surprise a few people especially with um, uh, Pascal Whirling and, and the car as well. Well, I was going to get yeah. on to, on to yeah. Manor. I mean, it's an interesting, yeah. once again, an interesting driver lineup. I mean, in this case, the money is coming from Indonesia with Rio Harianto, mm. who raced Formula 3 here in Australia and has been a guest on the, on the show on a couple of occasions mm. in the past. 
Uh, he's bringing, he's obviously bringing the money, but um, really, you know, Mercedes sort of, I suppose, you know, farming out Pascal Verlhein to the mm -hmm. to the team. They've they've got a very high opinion. They've always had a really high opinion of him, mm. and this is obviously his big chance to prove that he's not going to be out of place in uh, mm. in this company. Yeah, no. absolutely. And he proved himself in DTM. Pascal well, yeah, Verlein. you don't. The talent's yeah. there. We know yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, and Mercedes does need somewhere to put him mm. while they figure out whether it's Nico Rosberg or Lewis Hamilton that they can do without in the future. But <laughs> it's yeah. somewhere. I mean, it is. Yeah. It's a good step. They need that step because it's it's guarding against the future, which teams that are dominant sometimes forget to do. Sometimes they yeah. neglect to think about. Yeah. Well, next year, you know, Ferrari will catch up, and then Lewis Hamilton will go off and make an album, and then what are yeah. we going to do? Yeah. We've got Pascal Verlein, and I think mm. with him in Manor and with the Mercedes engines and the Williams and uh that should be a pretty decent package, I would think. But how far up they can move, considering the bodywork still has to be theirs, is the question. But it should at least be, you know, somewhat closer than last year. I think. I think they'd be disappointed if they were always last. Mm. And I think there are still ingredients, at least in the first round or second round, uh, where you know, you, you, they're having to use the clutch and get the clutch point right as well, mm -hmm. and they're not talking on the radio. Guys who can sort of get around that and have got a good natural knack for getting that right can surprise early until eventually the engineers work out, OK, we can probably preset this so you won't have that problem. But track by track, grip's going to change. So I still think the driver ability and the natural deal is going to come pay dividends early on. The, the next team to talk about, I suppose, you know, the case of how the mighty have fallen, McLaren Honda. Um, what are we, are we looking for any improvement there at all? Well, yeah. It has yeah. to be. It has, I mean, to, has to, you know, get past the, the finish line or the, the start line to, yeah. to start with. Start line's and key. Start it's line. key. After it's last key. year, yeah. it's absolutely key. If they yeah. can start the first yeah. race with both cars. They will have hit all their KPIs once they yeah. do that. Yeah. It's been interesting, I think, to see that people reassess given the testing scenario. Given that the Honda engine's definitely improved, uh, deployment of the electrical energy, which is the weakness last year, has improved heaps. And people are now starting to look at the chassis and think, Maybe it wasn't, after last year, somebody said, well, it's the best chassis on the grid. It's just got a terrible engine. People are starting to go, maybe the chassis was only okay. And actually, mm. that's equally an area that needs to be worked on. Because you can only work on it so much if the power unit's not pushing it to its maximum. You can only learn so much about it. So I think this is actually going to be a somewhat longer process for them to really make it to the top. They're keeping that window open for some reason, saying, well, podiums could be possible at the end of the year. Mm. Uh, they said that last unit didn't work. Although, yeah, uh, <laughs> although Mercedes sort of, through a bit of a spanner on that works, and they sort of said, "Well, if we, if the regulations were thrown out and we were starting from scratch, we could get there in you know, mm. two months if we wanted to." So Honda have no excuse. That was a bit of, uh, okay. You know what do we do? <laughs> They've got the most experienced driver lineup with uh, with both Button and uh, and Alonso. I mean, uh, are they are they the right people for this job now? I mean, should when when they've gone to this, you know, re basically reinventing the. The, the brand, as it were, by bringing the Honda engine, it would have been a time to sort of, you know, just perhaps keep one of them to, for experience and bring in some young person, mm. um, young guy from somewhere. Mm. How do they keep these guys happy? Do you think they'll still be, this time next year, do you think we'll be talking about either or both of those guys still being at McLaren Honda or even in Formula One? Well, it's an interesting idea because a lot of people say, no, you need that experience there uh, to develop this machinery. And part of that is true, but also you look at... Uh, the season that Ricciardo had when he came into Red Bull the first year as well. Um, when a guy comes in and he hasn't had that success straight away and you've got problems with the car, a lot of the time, they're not just happy to be there, but they are happy to move the team forward because they don't have that expectation. They haven't fallen off the cliff. Whereas those guys might be feeling a little bit more jaded than they were 12 Alonso months ago. Was particularly disenchanted <laughs> oh, last well, year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Has Mark, he taken yeah. his glasses off yet? Well, <laughs> Mark, was it ended like in Abu Dhabi that Mark Webber said privately to Martin Brundle that, that he was a powder key waiting to go off? Mm -hmm. I was like, well, okay, that tells another story. You can imagine entirely. about halfway through the year, he's probably going to be sitting there sort of around the time of the, uh, the race in Baku and going, you know, I could be in France about now. <laughs> Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yes. Speaking of France, um, the newly reborn formerly Lotus, now Renault. Um, mm. What's the go with these guys? Is this just a year of sort of treading water until they get, until the real thing happens next year? I think they thought so. That's certainly the expectations they set up. Having mm. seen Honda come back, even though it's a different situation and having high expectations and falling down, they sort of tempered it a bit. But mm. after like one or two tricky days in testing, they actually look really good. And mm. I think it's a testament to the fact that the Lotus guys, because the team at Enstone, which it's been for many, many years, is a really solid group of people, even without any money at all last mm. year, built a solid, reliable car. And that's the mm. car Renault's developed this year. And I think it should yeah. be 
it should at least be consistent. If it's not going to be the quickest car out there, that should be a car they can definitely build on and deliver solid points. So it won't be a, a year to set the world alight, but I think it will be a, a year that won't embarrass them by that same mm. token. Okay, let's go through through the rest quickly now. We've got Sahara Force India. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people are expecting them to do really well this year. Every year they come out with a good car and they just don't capitalise early enough when they should when all the other teams catch up, you know, and they, and they overtake them. So they've just got to do that. They've got to do that mm -hmm. this year, yeah. And in some ways this is a bit like the Haas scenario, I mean, because it was going to be you know, bringing through young Indian talent and bringing all of that Indian money and, mm -hmm. and passion into, into the sport, and that just, that just hasn't Never happened at, at all, which is, a, which is a shame, really. But, uh, yeah, they are racing with Perez and Hulkenberg. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, Red Bull Racing, the two... What are we expecting? I mean, I love the, li I love yeah. the livery. It's I love the really livery. Isn't it? yeah. It's brilliant, its like a masterstroke, just make some shine off it, take the white out, and it mm. looks really cool. It does, it looks magic. Yeah. It's like those old Roald Dahl books with a red writing on the green, and you're wobbling, <laughs> oh, I'm tripping out, you know, it's great. <laughs> yeah, haven't, yeah. Seen, haven't seen it in real life yet, but I'm mean, looking forward yeah. to it. it, it it's there. But can they improve? That's probably the main thing. Um, well, we the know, tag yeah. Boyer engine. Yes, the mm. power unit, as they refer the to it, not unit. with a brand, except yeah. if it's tag. Uh, mm. I mean, we know they build cars well. We know Adrian Newey's still involved, so he's building solid cars. Power units, the question. Can Renault deliver a big boost? It doesn't look like it in the preseason, but they've got a big upgrade due, I think, middle of the year. So they'll be aiming for that, I think. Mm. What about the future of these two guys? I mean, are they under, are both or either of them under any great pressure this year? Because we know how quickly Red Bull yeah. um, likes to move people um, on. And they've got plenty of talent in reserve. Yeah, I know Fiat was under a lot of pressure last year from Helmut Marco behind closed doors. He was just berating him almost every round, you know. So it might have looked all roses up front. But there was, yeah, there was definitely pressure on there as well. I think with, with Daniel, there could be other prospects down the track, mm -hmm. potentially down, down, down the road in, in red gear. But you know, I yeah. guess that remains to be seen, depending on where Mr. Verstappen goes as and well. And that's it. It's two yeah. drivers that are being targeted by Ferrari between mm. Verstappen and Ricardo, both in line possibly for Raikkonen seat next year. Red mm. Bull wants to keep them, obviously. It's yeah. going to be really interesting to see how they juggle those four drivers in those four seats. Uh, Williams, Martini, Racing, uh, they, they were the ones who can come up. If anybody's going to come up and surprise at a, <coughs> at, at a particular track, it's probably one of these guys. Potentially, potentially, you sort of wonder. I think Massa's still got a few good races in him. And when I say a few good races, on his day, he's very, very good. Botas still, a lot of people still say he's a potential world champion, but he's made odd comments uh, about like at Silverstone last year when they, they got out front and then he left the door open for Hamilton. It's like, well, something was on. You know, he's like, and his response was, well, when it's worth it, I will. Well, when you need to get another chance, you just don't know. So that's a little question mark over Botas, I think. Um, as we said, quickest in uh, quickest in preseason testing was Ferrari. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Are, have, have they made the next step? Are they going to be the the genuine uh, contenders up against Mercedes? Big question is engine mode. The thing that got Mercedes over the line for most of last year was this qualifying engine mode that gave mm. them a couple of extra tenths in qualifying. Because on the race, I mean, three times last year Ferrari beat them. It depends if Ferrari's got that in the engine this year. Because judging mm. tentatively by lap times. Ferrari seems to have taken a, a genuine step forward in yeah. general pace, but whether or not that power unit has that extra edge is really the question. But otherwise, you would be disappointed as a Ferrari fan if you weren't contending for wins this year. Mm. And once again, it's a nice-looking car too. I don't know. It's a, the, I know there hasn't been any radical changes in terms mm -hmm. of the regulations, but the cars just to me look a lot nicer this year. They look they look like fast cars. And as Enzo Ferrari used to say, ugly race cars don't win. And there's there's, mm -hmm. there's not too many ugly cars. Um, there's this, the Toro Rosso car, mm. the Red Bull. They're all looking they're all looking really nice this year. Mm. Until yeah. they do win, and then they look fantastic. No yeah, that's, that's, like. that's true. Speaking yeah. of winning, I mean, let's cut to the chase. Can anybody beat Mercedes? Over the course of a year, yeah, I think it's I, it's definitely theirs to lose at this point. That's not to mm. say that no one's closer than they have been in the last couple of years. I think Ferrari has a mm. chance, but it's going to take one of those 100% every race yeah. kind of effort. I, I think that uh, two things: if, if Ferrari have indeed closed the gap, and and just the uh, the makeup they have there with Vettel and the relationship they have, when when they asked Vettel to move over for Kimi. He didn't argue about it. He said, well, I hope this is part of the game plan, but I'll work with it now. Try doing that to Lewis or Nico, mm -hmm. and that's where the trouble's going to lie, especially with no radio contact as well. Those guys are always second-guessing themselves. I think that's, that's what's going to get them over the line at Ferrari. 
which Lewis Hamilton do we see this year? I mean, do we see oh. the do we see the focused guy, or, or do we see the Formula One's tabloid darling turn up? And is this could this be Nico's big chance to come through and and take that title? I think that Nico knows now that he can still beat Hamilton and mm. champion Hamilton last yeah. year with those last couple of races he won. Nico has to put in a good showing in the first three rounds. If he can do that, then I think he's in with a shot. But if mm. he gives Hamilton an early run, I just Rosberg doesn't seem like that guy who can pick it back up again. Despite mm. those last races at the end of last year, I think Hamilton still has that upper hand. But mm. it'll be fascinating to see. If Rosberg can survive this year, then I think it's fair to rank him in those drivers that even if they don't have a title, it's still pretty good. But if he doesn't, then he's going to be one of those sort of almost almost guys. Okay, so I take it we're in agreement that Mercedes are probably going to win the Constructors' Championship. Michael, who wins the World Championship? It's really hard to go Ooh. past Lewis Hamilton. My head says La Hamilton, my heart says Vettel, but I, it's hard to go past him. But I think it'll definitely be a closer year. I'll say Hamilton, but you won't believe how. <laughs> <laughs> click for well, more. Well, yeah, they're, they're <laughs> click for more, yes. Yeah. Pictures on yeah. pictures at 11. Yeah. Um, guys, first of all, Trent, tell us E Racing Magazine, where do people find it? Uh, you can go to e slash e -ra e and there's a link to all the magazines there as well. Um, so, yeah, that's probably the best place to, to go to. Or just look up E Racing Magazine. And yeah, you'll find it. And Michael, you're back with uh, Box of Neutral. That's at ABC Grandstand. When and where can people catch up with that? Absolutely. ABC Grandstand, which is a digital radio station. Don't look for it in your AM band. It won't work. Uh, half past 10 on Friday mornings, or go to boxofneutrals.com or Facebook or Twitter slash Box of Neutrals to keep up with all of that. Or wherever good podcasts are found. Yes, a solid podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, thanks for... Uh, enjoy, the, enjoy the weekend. Enjoy season 2016. But for now, thanks for joining us in Pit Lane. Thanks, thanks Brett. Thank you. And thanks to you for joining us. Yes, we'll give you all of the... Uh, keep tuned for all of the uh, updates from the Formula One Grand Prix and from the Formula One Grand Prix season. But for now, from all of us here, we'll catch you later. Bye for now.